Those sounds are so beautiful. It reminds me of when, uh, when we do ayahuasca, in the morning there's usually somebody that walks around and they've got these chimes and there's like a wind and an earth and a fire and they all have their own unique and they're so beautiful. And when you're when you're in that medicine, like the, the I don't know, how, I, I can't describe what it does to your hearing, but it just does something different to sounds. How cool. And, and it, I mean, it just, you can, you can feel them vibrate and they'll come by and they just ring it by your ear. And I mean, I could sit there all day, it feels like, and just listen to it. A noise just vibrate like you can almost feel like every little piece of it and you can watch what it's feel what it's doing to the inside of your brain how cool yeah really fascinating psychedelic or really fascinating sounds when you're on psychedelics and uh anyways onward and upward walking to observing consciousness um that's dj yeah this is dj <laughs> i'm dj that's alethea and uh dana's dana's not feeling well today and uh, we might get a special guest sit in later on. We'll see if uh, Ian we're, wants to. So we're doing the, the mobile version. Yeah, this is. So uh, we've got our mobile um, <laughs> sage plate. <laughs> mobile sage plate. And we've got uh, our mobile home. Yeah, so this is, we're actually in Aletheia and Ian's tiny home. Um, it's hard to tell because we, we hung the tapestry up. And we'll probably, we'll take a couple of pictures like after. Yeah. So you guys can see what it looks like in here. But uh, this is like the inaugural. We did. When they first bought this, we did Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving of last year that we did here to break it in. Yeah, and there like, was like 30 35. people. Yeah, there's a bunch of us in here. And it was the, table. Yeah, we could like, you come in on one side and once you got in, you couldn't get back out again because you had to go past like 17 people and there wasn't enough space between the wall and the chairs. It's because this is a... Uh, we made like a wood burning heater for that. It was cool. I have pictures. Yeah. But we have, uh, it's not actually a regular tiny house. This is actually a 48 foot um, semi truck trailer. With it's essentially it used to be like a refrigerated trucker. Yeah. Free, yeah. So, so it's there's insulated. Full insulation. Yeah, and this it's uh it's really turned into something pretty spectacular. Like it's you guys coming have put together. A lot of elbow grease into this since last year, but to see, yeah, we'll put some pictures and, and do some stuff. But anyways. Uh, we're breaking it in uh, in every way that we can. So first we did Thanksgiving. <laughs> now they're doing all the walls. Everything's coming in. So now we thought we'd do an Observing Consciousness podcast from here. And Get I think all like, the good juju in yeah, these Yeah, in like two, maybe two weeks, you guys should be actually able to move in, right? I'm moving in whether yeah. it's ready or not. Yeah, I'll sleep on the floor. <laughs> put, up, put up a tent, call it a day. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. So anyways, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do some pictures and show some stuff off. Mm -hmm. And um show everybody what you guys have been up to but this is this is pretty cool and it's cool yeah it's awesome it's very cool and it just snowballed off of an idea over breakfast one day so the best one that's like, been uh life the last few years i think well think about you know if you think about manifesting like what manifesting uh -huh. is and we talked about it before we did an episode but it's like you, you manifest on autopilot like you're doing it whether you know it or not every all the thoughts that come in all the foundation that you learned when you were young that feeds the thoughts, the way that you understand the world, all that stuff creates the manifestations that you're dealing with today. If you stop and look at like where 75 to 80% of the thoughts that you spend, that's the reality that you live in. It's like, we're doing that. So it all starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I started with it. We threw an idea out over, over breakfast. Yeah. Look at what the idea turned into. It's amazing. It's like, you know, went to a concert and look what the concert turned into. Yeah. It's like, you know, the people that you meet, the relationships that get formed, what a fascinating Life journey. is magic. It, yeah, it is. Like, it, it's for, and that's the beauty of it. Like, it's magic for some people. And if you don't want it to be, if you want it to be shit, then life is shit. I want it to be magic. Yeah, like, it, that's, <laughs> ever since I realized that, like, it is magic. Like, it really is. When you look like, around, like, for so many reasons, it's magic. Yeah. We won't go too far down that rabbit hole no. because then we'll just, we're going to have a different podcast all together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a yoga. I teach yoga by my horses now. Like, what, you know, that's magic. There, there's just a lot of things. Yeah, you there's, know? A, there's a lot of magic going yeah. on here. I feel like the timing is right because the, every time we talk, you're getting, you're doing more and more sound healing on your end and your stories. Like we, we have a group text that's going on and some of the stuff that I've been, the feedback that Lethe has been giving us about her sessions that, you know, starting out as body work, but it's turning into so much more now. It's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I just went, I went through like several years of my life where I was like kind of worried about doing energy work with people and you know having a little bit of imposter syndrome and not feeling good enough and then um i wasn't any kind of crazy partier i mean i guess compared to normal people i was but you know just <laughs> just uh compared to my circle of friends i wasn't but kind of just still being in that world like i wasn't tapping in in the way that i could have been and um I don't know, in the last like year I've been kind of settling into just like, okay, like now I'm doing energy work and it's a combination of many modalities I've learned, like everything is in healing, right? We don't just use like one modality. Um, and then I just 
um, stop judging myself and stop doubting and saying, you know, whatever's coming through is coming through and I'm going to let people know what I'm feeling. And so I've been having this open dialogue with my clients and it's been insane. Like the stuff that I'm essentially you're helping cha- them with. Essentially yeah. you're channeling for them. Is yeah. What's happening. You're getting messages that are coming through. Do you know where the messages are coming from? Um, for me, like I set an intention to connect directly to source and let source flow through me to them for healing light energy or whatever they need into their cells. So, um, and then I ask for help from their guides. So source and guides and, guides. and yeah, Which their, is kinda, their team probably. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I feel like that's probably, you know, you say source energy, the soul, mm-hmm. the guides, like that's all kind of part of the same team. And I don't yeah. know how to exactly to differentiate them because they're all on your team. I feel like everybody wants you to, that wants the best for your journey. Understand, you know, they all understand what your journey is about, even though we're kind of like bumping into walls. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, although you're finally stopping, you're not bumping into so many walls. Like you, you've, you've torn down a lot of walls. Yeah. Um, one of them being that's, that's really powerful is your sobriety. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's been, um, inspiring for you know you have a huge group of friends I, I like to say that yeah. you're like the center center of our friend group mm. and we have a, a large like, there's a large circle of us and for you to stop drinking like that was that was one of your main connections to the group was that you, that's how you connect going with everybody out. was going out yeah. and seeing us seeing everybody at the bar um it, it was it was just that that's that was the way of networking mm-hmm. so Talk us through the excitement, the down, you know, what, has there been pitfalls to the, to the stopping? Has it yes. all been good? Like, yeah, tell us about <laughs> no. it. Tell us about the journey. Yeah. Cause it's, it's, you're, you're coming, you're coming up on a year. When is yeah. your one year sober? Um, it's in four days. Fucking high Yeah. Five. December 13th will be one year. And, um, I never thought that I would ever be able to do that. You know, and my husband has struggled with alcoholism and addiction his whole life. And three months into dating, he was like, I'm quitting alcohol. It's the only way we're going to work. And I'm doing it because I believe that, you know, this is going to make me my best version of myself. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, that means I have to be sober. And, like, and you don't have to do that you, anyway. You kind of went into that kicking and screaming just a little bit going, I'm yeah, not, that's not Yeah, and he was like, you don't. That's not what it is. This is about me. This is my journey. So he um, did his thing and stayed sober. And I would go to his shows and still party and all this stuff. And... Um, I have been battling with my own issues about it, and I was texting with Dana and DJ this morning and saying, like, hey, I found this journal entry from 2019, and so I have been feeling this way for years, and I'll just read it really quick. Um, So this is in 2019, you wrote this to yourself. I wrote this to myself. Toxicity comes in a lot of forms. One I battle most is substance, alcohol. It's like a controlling poison where even if I'm being pretty balanced, I consider it needing just a slow drip daily to quietly dull my senses why is this in my heart i believe this is one of the lower energy the ways lower energies consume us dimming our light just a bit so our full potential could not be realized in this day and age energies are intensifying and as light workers i feel like it's do or die we are being forced to embrace the light each day and be pulled down harder by the alternative i know that i'm here to do great things and i have not had fears about life in a very long time And yet this year, anxiety has taken over me and I found myself questioning my existence, fearful of death, and some days I feel like I'm barely living. I know that change begins with a conscious choice. I'm here now and ready to embrace all change that keeps me in line with my highest good. I want to enjoy my time here, take nothing for granted, and love everything about this beautiful planet while I get to experience it again. So, yeah, I've been feeling... I've been struggling for a long time and uh, you know I watched my dad die of cirrhosis of the liver when I was 23 and he was 53 my sister-in-law died two years ago um, in like basically a seven-year span of a downward spiral in alcoholism and I just finally hit the point within myself where I just thought that I should quit and so I took 90 days off before my wedding and I felt amazing and I was like, I can't imagine having my wedding and not having champagne at my wedding. So just for just for con- <laughs> just for contrast, so so your husband stopped drinking and stopped. He just he he went sober uh, at what date or what? February about? six. February, and you you got on board at what point? When did you stop your? When did you stop? How long after? I stopped in August for ninety days. In August. So so what was the how was the relationship while you were still drinking and he was and he was sober? Um. For me, it was fine, you know? He got to, like, drive me home from the gigs, and um, we talk about it now, and he was like, yeah, I mean, there were definitely times where it was, like, 
I had to deal with you and it was annoying. You know, I'm not, I wasn't like a train wreck, so I wasn't that kind of drunk, but um, it wasn't, it wasn't going to take us to the best place we could be. Um, and yeah. looking back now, I see that. <laughs> I got to see, so I don't, I, I think I shared this one on one of the other podcasts, but I'll go into it again, is I was, I was doing mushrooms um, here not too long ago, and I got, I saw myself with just one sip of alcohol. Right, I don't have a big alcohol issue. Like yeah. I don't, I don't, well, sometimes I'll go out and I just drink water. It's, it, so I don't really have a problem with it. But I, I saw myself for whatever reason. The mushrooms showed me what I like, what my ego does when I'm like with just a sip of alcohol, and I can, and I literally was able to see it because my, my ego flares up. Like the last, you know, few years, it's been about just, you know, not having an ego, just, just observing and not being, not being emotionally invested in anything one way or the other. Just you know, let it, let it be, and just be a loving being, all that stuff. And uh, every time I would drink, which, you know, some, sometimes I'd go for a few months, I wouldn't have a drink, and then I would drink. And, like, when I would drink, I could hear myself in my, I would have to shut my ego up, like, quit, you know, because my, my go-to, my, my programming, my conditioning was, and especially, like, in my family, was we, we, would, we would rip each other. We would fuck, we'd make fun of each other. Mm -hmm. And I don't find that serves me in the best way to, to tear people down. So mm -hmm. I stopped it. So I stopped like I'm trying to I'm reprogramming myself. So I don't do that. And that's when I'm on my day to day and when I'm interacting with people normally, my ego doesn't go there. But I throw it, I throw even a drink of alcohol and I mean one drink and, right. I, and I, and it will, it doesn't fire up hard, but I can hear it. It just, and I'm just like, I went, wow, one drink does that to me. Just one sip of alcohol yeah. does that. And it turns it on just enough to where it doesn't, doesn't mean I can't control it. And I usually stifle it, but sometimes something slips out and I'm like, what the fuck did I yeah. say that? Like, and, it, and it's just like, it's something that's not, you know, the personality trait that I, that I am now, but it's fucking sneaks out. It's, it's crazy. It's really fascinating what it alcohol is, can do. Yeah, it and is that's somebody that doesn't have a problem with it. I know. It's not it all the time. <laughs> I know. Like, so I can only imagine what, yeah. what some of the, the ins and outs that you, you went through. Yeah, well, I went, I went back to it, you know, at the wedding and beyond, and it was a span of six weeks, and I was like, this will be fine. Like, obviously, I don't have an issue because I took 90 days off. So I'll just drink a couple days a week. And um, it just started gaining traction and snowballing. And I just realized about six weeks in, like, I can't do that. Like, I'm not capable of it. I'm not capable of moderating. I'm not capable of being the kind of person that can just go a few months and not drink without just thinking about it all the time. My whole life. I mean, it sounds dramatic, but my whole life was basically based around alcohol, and that's really fucking sad. Um, so I had a whole come to Jesus moment, and I told Ian, like, I think I have to quit for good, and I was just gutted. I was like, it felt like I was losing my best friend. Um, I went up to stay with him at the cabin, and I had a vision in the middle of the night of the higher, like, the old, an older version of myself, almost like my higher self, embracing the, like a beautiful young party girl and and saying goodbye and I just woke up just gutted and sobbing because I was saying goodbye to her and I just felt her go and I was done <laughs> it's pretty incredible it's like, crazy yeah and, and like you're you guys you know obviously doing it together has got to make it easier but everybody in the group like everybody in the group does their has their own fight has their own vices yeah and you guys have stepped away from that. So what's that been like? And what hard. Has... It's really hard. You feel like you, you feel isolated and, or I felt isolated and like I lost friends. It's what it feels like, you know, everybody still loves you and it's not. You just don't, you don't get to see them as much anymore. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to be around certain like triggering places, one place in particular. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's important that you have to step away from it for a while, but it's starting to get easier. At first I was like, I don't even know how to be, I'm no fun. I'm not going to be fun. I'm never going to have fun again. I'm never going to laugh and like loosely the way that I used to. And now I'll find myself in a social setting cracking up. And I've told Ian like, oh my God, like I laughed, like I had fun around people. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that's one thing. That's actually a really good point because uh, when you and I first met, um, you know, I, I smoke weed quite a bit and, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was actually not smoking weed at that point in time. And I remember like we, we sat out here at your ranch and, uh, we, I think it was, we were out to like two, three o'clock yeah. or something like that. I think it was me, you and Felix the summer and, and Brian was there and, you know, we had a, but there's, there's yeah. a decent size. And I was as clear headed as I had been in so long. <laughs> 
and I was, and I had the same thoughts as you had about, you know, when I, when I didn't have the weed, like, how am I, how's this going to be fun? How am I going to be relaxed? How yeah. am I going to sink into this? And I was like, oh, I was just sharper and I was funnier. And, and you and remembered I, everything. And I remembered everything. <laughs> I was like, it's not so, like, like sober is like, you just get this idea in your head. And I, like, I, I can't, I, you know, I struggle with it now, even with like weed. I, mm-hmm. I've been smoking weed almost every day for like the last 10 years since I went yeah. through my divorce. And, um, you know, it's something that I have to, like, I have to go, I have to deal with myself just the same way you yeah. are. And it's like, when I've done it, the few times that I have stopped for a few weeks here and there or a month or whatever, um, I, I look back and it's like, it's not that hard. I just find something different to do with your time. And then yeah. I get stuck in this, in the, the, you know, the rut of doing that with my time instead yeah. of something else that mm-hmm. could be more productive. Yeah. Or, and I'm such a like high functioning pothead that I don't know. I don't really <laughs> notice my, that I'm not productive. You know, I'm definitely less productive. But I still can get my shit done. If it's got to get yeah. done, I still get it done. So that's, it's like, oh, over here I got the, you know, the, the good angel and the bad angel. Yeah. It's like, that bad angel's like, dude, we're getting it done. Let's get high again. It's and the good angel's like, you know better. And I'm like, shut up, man. We got, we got this. You know what I mean? So I, I understand the struggle, just not from the alcohol perspective. I wish I could smoke weed. Um, I, I mean, I believe in the medicinal, you know, everything about marijuana. And like, I used to eat like a little bit of edible every night to go to bed and, but I just am not any sort of functioning stoner. <laughs> like I can't do or get things done or think. Like it, just, and I get so anxious that it just it doesn't agree with me. But I think it's for certain people it's so useful, you know, and it's good for certain people. Like a lot of ADHD and different things like that. That I think it's just like chemical with certain makeups. Like it works for some people and it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. And just like that, we've got three of us. Uh, yeah. So we took a quick little break. Ian was walking by, and we thought he just released some new music, he's making a cup of matcha. Yeah, he's just got some coffee in his hand. It looks like he wanted to bullshit with us. So, you better uh, get in this trailer and talk yeah. to us. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about. I mean, you can talk whatever you want, music. But one of the questions I have is, how's the new music being received? Because I uh, like, we're getting some great feedback. Uh, yeah, our, our band Ian Crawford and Cosmic Miles. We put out uh, a new EP last week, last Friday. Uh, it's called Lift Off. You can uh, find it on any platform, download Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. And yeah, we're getting some great feedback from it. We're, uh, we're really excited. Um, got a few things in the works that have uh, kind of come from its release that we're really excited about uh, announcing soon. Some Just some cool opportunities that we're picking up. And uh, yeah, the band's really happy. We're already hard at work on the next one. We decided we're going to do a full-length record. Awesome. Uh, so that's the plan for the, the what we're, we're already uh, pretty well into, like, ideas and, and all that stuff. So it's... So uh, what can we expect? To, I mean, this this music just dropped. You've got a video yeah. that's, that's going to come along with it. Is the video, yeah. video going to get to see some, some light here pretty soon? Yeah, I think we're going to put out put out the video. We filmed a little thing here at the ranch and uh, and uh, used Alethea's uh, Gladius like, show. A, yeah, little, yeah, a yeah. little thing. Like, we're, yeah. okay, if we're going to call it... DJ, like you're, the pe- you're the pizza man. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> yeah, I was the pizza guy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think I got a... Yeah, I think I have a credit on there somewhere as being the delivery boy or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I you saved my... us in a pinch. We were like, we were, everything was just, we kind of scrambled to make it work, uh, you know, kind of at the last second, we, we managed to do it. So yeah, we're, yeah, it's, it turned out pretty cool. Well, so it's, we're going to, uh, that's it... my first music video and I got to deliver pizza to it. So yeah, kids, you guys can do this too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you have um, anything about the songs you feel like most proud of? Is there anything different about it than music you've written before or? Um, yeah, most definitely. I think just because, like, this time around, we got to do everything, like, in one place, mm-hmm. which when I've, when I've tried to make records before myself, um, not, like, with, you know, on a label or anything like that, it's, um, it's been a very, like, DIY process where we gotta, like, I'm recording in people's basements and garages and... <laughs> And it's, it's, so there's like this, there's, there's total inconsistency. You're like the bathroom's got good acoustics. Yeah, we're going, just, going just, there. just doing whatever you can with the budget you can. And um, so that's like when I did the, when I did Grand Wheel before that, it was, it was just a, basically it was just a bunch of like demos, you know, like just a bunch of high quality demos. And Grand Wheel was more of an acoustic album, right? With yeah. Acoustic-ish, yeah. I mean, it was it was kind of more just something I wanted to flex. The folk, s- folkish. Yeah, and it's definitely got a lot of folk, folky vibe to it. It's definitely, but it's got some heavy, heavier electric mm-hmm. moments to it. But um, it was definitely something that I wanted to use as like showcasing songwriting mm-hmm. um, because that was I I you know written songs 
plenty of times before, but I was usually not the singer of those songs. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show something more, a, a little more unexpected. Mm -hmm. You know, I think everyone just kind of thought it was going to be a guitar shred album. And, mm -hmm. So where I, can we find that? Can we find that music and compare? Yeah, you can find that one on. It's just for download. I never made physical copies of Spotify. it. Spotify. But, but Spotify, Apple Music, you can hear it on there. And uh, did we need to go look for that song specifically, or is it under in? Ian Crawford and Cosmic Wiles. Uh, that's just under Ian Crawford, the first okay. one. But the new stuff, the new the new EP, which is called Lift Off, uh, is uh, under Ian Crawford and Cosmic Wiles. So, so do you have a favorite that came out of those uh, the last batch of few songs that you put out? Yeah, it's I do. It's funny. It's kind of like you, it's uh, some, but it's the last song on the, of the four. And it's funny. It's her. It's her. It's her least favorite song. <laughs> so <laughs> Lisa, we funny. were. Lisa and I were talking before we started yeah. recording. Um, so my favorite is Lighter Thief is my favorite. Yeah, that's been, uh, we've been getting favorite, a lot of good feedback on Lighter Thief. So. Nothing but the sea, mm. and then Space Wars, and then the last one was oh. um, Skinwalker. Uh, Skin, Skinwalker. Skinwalker. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, nothing. Nothing but a sea is probably my favorite. I think just kind of like what, what the the content of the song and like the moments it has. It's for me. It's just like it's that perfect blend of everything I wanted to do as a writer, as a guitar player. Um, but it, I, 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 they all, they're all fun. I like, I like what we did. Um, there were definitely some things that we, we were, we were kind of rushed in there and there are definitely some ways that I would have gone about, uh, doing it a little differently, but we were like, we had a, we had a really good time making the music and, uh, we're, um, it sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it really turned awesome. out really good. The end result, the end result is really cool and we're, we're, we're happy with it and it's a good, uh, it's it's a good first step out into the world mm -hmm. for for the band because you got been, all your Vegas fans super supportive. I know. Yeah, that. yeah, we've been getting a ton of feedback. Mm -hmm. We feel really grateful, and and so we're but yeah, it's it's exciting. We um we've we've gone through a few little changes behind the scenes in terms of getting um where the band is now and like getting things moving forward and like what we have going on uh, currently. We're really excited about um, both live and in the studio. Anything um, that you can share with us? Um, just that, I mean, all four of us are writing, uh, together. We have, a, we have a new drummer, uh, as of recently, Michael Hoffman, and, uh, Joe is still involved. Um, he's, you know, he's, Joe's, be, the, Joe's on the harmonica. Yeah, Joe, writing, Joe played drums on the record. And, and, the, yeah, oh, drums and, in uh, the record, yeah, he plays Yeah, yeah, he's a, fa and a fantastic musician, and so, like, so, um, but Joe, Joe's gonna be, um, probably playing some, like, second drums and harmonica when he's able to, nice. and, and, um, so we'll we'll bring him in for moments like that, and the, but the we got Michael kind of holding it down for us right now, and uh, he's he's an incredible musician. He's a Michael's got some cool accolades. Like he's also I just found out recently. Like he's he's he fills in at the Mad Apple for the yeah. For he's Mad like Apple. on the roster at, at that Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, yeah and, and he has like a big drum showcase moment in the show, and yeah, he's he's incredible. He's I, a so, yeah, yeah, he's a jazz ma major from UNLV, and he's just a fantastic guy, fantastic drummer. We're really lucky to have him. I went to uh, Mad Apple last year. I want to say it was like maybe New Year's Eve or right around New Year's Eve last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm like 95% sure that Mike Hoffman was there. And I hadn't no. met him yet. Yeah, yeah he's, he's newer oh, to that. Yeah, because he, see, he looks so familiar. And I was like, dude, was that the same drummer? So he does America's Got Talent, too. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's a really busy guy, and so we feel really lucky to have him. We've... We've all, like, over the last year since we formed the band, it's been almost a year since we formed the band, like mid-January oh, yeah. of this last year, so it's coming up on a year, um, and, you know, we've we've kind of slowly figured things out, but, like, in that year, you know, we got in the studio, we got some music out in the world, finally. And so we were just talking about how it's crazy because life is just magic. I was like, I think this trailer was something we just stumbled into over breakfast and thought about yeah it oh, did you tell that whole story do you feel that way about like now you have this album and it was just a thought one day right like, yeah yeah kind of just and and i think even even like from that the infancy of that what we're working on right now is really exciting yeah. and it's and i think it's like even it was just the step in the direction of i think this next thing that we're doing um, there's a couple songs that i've been like holding out mm -hmm. on because I, I i wanted them to be on a, a full length concept how long have you been sitting on those ideas? The ones that we just put out? The ones you're talking about, the future ones. Um, some of them more recent. Some of them have been, some of them uh, go back a couple years. Cool. So, yeah, there's a few old ones. That's just like these last ones, there were, were a few that I was sitting on for a few years. Mm -hmm. And they finally got to see the light of day. So, yeah. That's awesome. What makes you, uh, so when you say that like you have some ideas that you wanted to be presented in a full length concept, what what makes that what drives that decision? Like, what is it about about that? I, I think you you have, 
you know, like with an EP, um, you, you it's kind of a short. So explain to us what the difference between EP, EP is like a um. I can't. I don't even know what the acronym is, but it's something like extended play it, or something it, like yeah, that. Yeah, it's something like yeah. I, but it's an EP is like a shorter body of work. Okay, so you, uh, you compared to a full length record, which a full length record is usually somewhere in the realm of extra partial, anywhere from eight, nine <laughs> to twelve, thirteen songs. You know, somewhere in you know roughly, full album. Like yeah, somewhere in like. that. But so like you know, an EP is like a shorter, more condensed release, and um, which I, as I really wanted to kind of hold out and and do this first record as, as uh, a full-length release, but I think just getting getting ourselves out there was important, and we were had some things kind of holding us up, and we did, we, like, and also just for, like, like I was saying earlier, like, like the tonal consistency of things, um, like, you know, we'd have to get back and get in the same studio and use the same gear and kind of do all the same, try to recreate what we had before when we can, because, you know, recording a record's not cheap, so it's, we, we just decided to do it short and sweet, and I think for that it was really nice. Um, but I, the next one I'm, I'm more thinking as um, it's kind of got a full concept. I wouldn't go as far as to say like a like a, like a rock opera or anything. Although we, we have talked about like, I, I had a rock opera I scrapped about seven, eight years ago, and I, we talked about like maybe pulling, it up. pulling that out from the ashes. But I don't know if that's if that's probably going to be the first thing we do. I think more it's just we want to just have a full-length batch of, of songs that we're really happy with all, you know, 10 to 12 songs, however much we... It would say it would be probably a minimum of 10. But Well, I have to say that since I, since I met you, one of the questions that I had was, you know, we, we all know what an amazing musician you are. We, we watch you, but we watch you play other people's music at such a high level. Like, it sounds like when you're listening to you play anybody's music, it sounds like you'd be listening to it on the radio. It's yeah. exactly like you listen to it. It's amazing. Like but channeling it, direct. Yeah, it is. But, mm. it, but it also doesn't tell us anything about what you sound like. So I finally got to listen to what you sound like, what your expression yeah. of music is. And I got to say, man, it's like, it's it's rock star-esque. It's oh, fucking it's awesome. Man. Thank it's you very really much. Good. It I, is I really good. It. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, guys. It's amazing. We appreciate that. Like, we... we um, you know, I think it's just one of those things that like the star stars gotta align. Like we got so lucky to like how this how this band formed and just under the circumstances of how it all came to be um, in so many various ways. And that's kind of like morphed a little bit even since its formation. You know, so it's why like why do you feel like the stars align? Um, I mean, it's just manifesting. You know, I think we, I think all of us, um, you know, we all everyone in the band is we're all really busy um grind day-to-day -day grind musicians mm -hmm. like we're all teachers we all teach music we all we're, we're just we're hustling you mm -hmm. know so like we i think it's just kind of a thing where you know a lot of musicians and, and a lot of them are content with it but like it, you know you're, you're playing other people's tunes and you're getting in that routine and that that's great and i think it, but like and i have a lot of fun doing it because i, it, I get to learn so much music and it it, it it gets to, it allows me to like push myself in terms of learning new material, mm -hmm. um, and it, it it allows us to cut our teeth as a, and, and as a band like starting out having those those gigs with MGM, you know, around Las Vegas is really it's cool. Great. Yeah, it's awesome because we get to just go out and like kind of have fun and like take the songs that we know and love and like put our spin on them, mm -hmm. you know, jam them out, you know, do funky little things like kind of like what the Grateful Dead did, you know, like. Um, but now we, we're, we're, and we spent, you know, we spent about four or five months doing that and then, all right, let's get some new songs in the fold, but we had to kind of still learn how to kind of jive as a band, work some bugs out and get the songs prepared, you know, and then, and then record them, kind of figure out what we're doing. And now that we're at this place of where we're playing these new original songs live, we played some of the, my, my old stuff live as a band, but you know, I, it was, I felt this is like us, you know, and the, and it's even though you know I've said many times before, like even though my name is the front of the band, it's very much a band. Like we are all, all equal members, uh, of of this project, and we all we all come in, we all write, we all sing, and we all play our ass off. So like we we we're really excited to to like debut this further. Um, we'll probably even start playing some of these new new songs live sooner than later before probably before we even record them, just to start, like, just, you know, like, Good. like a stand-up comic, you know, awesome. tests out material, mm -hmm. you know, like this, like, we got, we got a lot of stuff, like, in our pocket right now, mm -hmm. so then we're, we're just, it's funny, too, because most of our, most of our, like, rehearsal is just us getting together and playing gigs, you know, we don't, we've, I think we've only gotten in a room maybe 
five times. Well, I think it's you hilarious know? when somebody yells out for a song and you're like, you look around and ask everybody, you know that one, you know that one, and they're like, everybody's like, yeah, I know that one. And you're like, well, this is the first time we're all playing this together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's try this. Right, three, you know, two or three out of four this. guys know it, and one, you know, but everyone's down to just go for it. Yeah, it is, and that's and that's cool. You know, that's like it, it kind of goes along with our name, Cosmic Miles. We like to take things out into the abyss yeah. and and co- try to try to come back in places but you know it's you know it's but it's uh well there's a couple of us that joke that i don't think you really know what those words mean they're like oh we've never tried this before it's like it sounds flawless when you guys when you guys just roll out a song you've never tried before. Like, like, you guys, i mean i like mean a, we uh, have our moments I mean, it doesn't always go that way but we 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 I've seen enough to say that bullshit it always goes it, it's, it's, like, it's, it's usually like, like up, it's man. usually it passes the test yeah. You know enough, well, it's pretty, it's <laughs> at the least, badass, luckily. But, but but yeah, it's it's really exciting times. It's we we spent like almost a year. That was kind of in a lot of ways. That was the game plan. Was like for me, I guess, and and also as the band kind of started, people started sticking. You know, like and like it's just like okay, what are we gonna do now? You know, we're using this this platform we have in town to just get out and play, impress people with other people's tunes occasionally we'll sneak in some of my original material in there but but like we get enough it's we get enough you know back from that for people to want to come see us and now we can kind of you know slowly slip in into like well this is not really what we're about well this is so but like but that's all and that's the cool thing too now we can like condense those all those songs and night after night we can slip in different shit because i don't like playing the same stuff every night well you're guys you know? when you go to one of your shows that's one of the interesting things is like you know you get a lot of the same requests but they they, they tweak them a little bit like yeah it's we, just a little different yeah we'll take like, the song off into a weird yeah. thing you know and that and make that like the majority of the song you know and, and then come back and you know like you know the verses the verses and the choruses are, are like Rosanna is one of my favorites. You guys, oh, we you love, yeah, we love Rosanna. We love playing Rosanna, man. It's just such a good cool song. Do, I never knew how cool Rosanna yeah, was. Oh, that's, man. Played it. That's, what, yeah, that's the thing. Is like, I always just think like, of MacGruber. Yeah, you guys, yeah. you guys played Rosanna. Have you ever seen MacGruber? No, I don't think so. No. Oh, man. I got her to watch MacGruber once, and she, she was good. Eh. Yeah. MacGruber is fantastic. If you've not seen MacGruber, go see MacGruber. It's so, like now. It's fantastic. <laughs> What's it about? It's, it's like a, it's Will Forte's, like, uh, S- it's a SNL movie. Oh. It's like his thing on MacGyver, but it's like a it's like a spoof on MacGyver. Okay, it's, you got me there. Oh, oh my god, I love it's MacGyver so as a kid, so I'll go watch it. The guy's a genius. It's it, it, it's it's fantastic. I love I love MacGyver. So uh, we talked a little bit about Alethea's sobriety, and your your sobriety interwines tightly with that. Like I, I, I'd have to say that uh, you're 90 percent of the reason that she decided to jump oh, up yeah. and do it, and oh and yeah, I mean I. Yeah, I mean, when we got together, we were party animals. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we've done it all. We, yeah, we, we really did. We really saw the sights. <laughs> you know? and, 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 and I definitely started to notice that, like, look, if I, if I, and it's, I, and it's been that way in the past for me, like, if I continue this, um, I'm going to lose every great thing I have in my life right now, and I never had it better. And I, I, it just was that, finally, that time where I, and that, almost that miracle I'd asked for, to whoever, you know, in the past of like, I just, I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, but like, for whatever reason, like, I can't get out of, get this monkey off my back. And, and she being with her, like something in that, in like that moment where I started to see, like, if I keep, if I don't cut this out now, it's going to get, it's going to be, I'm going to ruin the best things that ever happened to me. And, you know, by the grace of the universe, <laughs> like it, it, it worked. You said it clicked. It, cl- it just clicked, and it was and it was different than I, I I'd ever experienced. It was, you know, I, honest, nothing short of some type of divine intervention. I don't, I can't even explain it, because it's it's been such a trial and error thing. And the more you, you know, fall off the horse and get back on, it, the harder it gets. And I was in a place where I I was, I had checked off so many of those. You know, and and I I didn't think I was ever fully gonna get out, and like for a long time, and I, and and so, the fact that at this moment in time, because you know that's also you have to how you have to look at it, it's like, it, it, that can go that can be gone like that. Well, and, everything is everything is a present moment. Like yeah, everything's happening everywhere at a present moment, yeah. and once that present moment's gone, it's just a memory in the back of your head. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. The next thing is what you know. Then it's like 
we've talked a couple times, you brought up the manifesting and this thing happening and all clicking. It's like, when you think about manifesting, how often do you guys pay attention to the fact of how fast it happens sometimes? Like yeah. For me, I can't the more just I pay attention to it, the more I realize it's ha it happens faster and faster. Yeah. And mm -hmm. The, the, the things you really to, need, yeah. I, I, I found. Like the things you really like. Well, it's, it's the things that you really think about. Mm -hmm. Not even not just the things you because you think about the things you really need a lot feel. of times and feel. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's like it's, it's like an order of operations. I it, think you have to have some other ducks in a row first mm -hmm. for like that big thing. Yeah. You know, as like, far as action versus feeling and thought. Yeah, like all I feel together. like that in a lot of ways. You know, but, I, I, it, but like yeah, because it's but it is it's insane how like how fast those things mm -hmm. well I, show I, up sometimes. I find myself where I'm like, I need a ABC and XYZ in my life. You know, typically it's like somebody that can show me a thing, like mm -hmm. I'm stuck in this spot. And I'm telling you, like I've, I've watched this happen a couple times where within a couple, two to three days, one of them was, was within four days, I was, all of a sudden I'm at somebody's house and I'm talking to somebody, they, they're that person that, and they're like, oh, I do blah, 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 and I'm like, you're like, yeah, I just asked I was for you. just, I was just, yeah. I had a meditation where I was saying, I need yeah. somebody that knows, understands mm -hmm. this thing in my life. And yeah. all of a sudden here you are in front of me and they're not, not and I'm not even, Having to ask them for that help, they're offering it to me, and it's like I'm like, man, that's just how I needed it. Like yeah. I didn't want to feel like I was, I was just there for to receive something. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like you know we're giving to each other. And it's yeah, like, mm -hmm. these things happen. It's like, think about think about what you think about kids. Like it's yeah. it's like it yeah. really does. The way that you think is the way the world get, gets yeah. brought good back and bad. Into you. Good and bad, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and it's been very much the, like I, the opposite of things. Like you know, you start to, and like those things that you're like worried about happening you think about them enough they're gonna happen they're gonna yeah they, yeah exactly yeah. If you, that, the thing you're worried about it's like yeah, it doesn't matter what you're and it'll and, it'll, and it'll, it. it'll be conjured and created in the in the strangest of circumstances you know you have to like be you have to really be ready for anything as possible well it's uh, good and bad but it's and it's all about how you push forward thinking about the things you want the things you need that like just you know just getting things to where you want to be the details are really important in anything manifesting if it's because let's face it like we were talking about before you manifest on autopilot whether you know you're doing it or not it's happening it's all part of the process thoughts go in they get pushed out the way the world works right so it's like everything that you're when you the more you think about the details of what you want to manifest is the more of that that you will get if you just say i want to here's a scenario i want to have a thing and you're like, I want to have a spot in the desert where I can go get away from everything. You may get a spot in the desert where you get away from everything, but the way you get away from is everything is by cutting everybody out of your life by pissing them off, mm -hmm. right? By self-sabotaging, by mm -hmm. right? Because you didn't think about the details of how I want to go be by, be alone, but I don't want to destroy everything. I don't yeah. want to be alone because the repercussions of, of yeah, it's like you don't think about how you know how you want to be alone. You don't want to think about how you want relationships to look so that so the sub. Con conscious it just it manifests what you want but you didn't give it the details so it gave you this is what you asked for so now mm -hmm. you've got it but now you've destroyed all your relationships so it's yeah like being cognizant of all the details of what you want from your manifestations and that's just all it, you know we're saying manifesting but all it really is is where you spend your time thinking you want to you know when your awareness is wherever it's at that's what you're thinking about think about all the details of what you want and then when you find yourself sliding back into the day-to-day -day life well now you're now your awareness is bringing you that stuff so you got to like kick it back over but just the details. I mean, that's yeah. That's where we where I think a lot of people get off off track. At mm -hmm. least I know I did because I asked for certain things where I was like, I just wanted this, mm -hmm. and I yeah. didn't ask for the details. And the details were really wonky. Mm -hmm. like, it was like Jesus Christ, this this is not what yeah. I wanted. Yeah. It's like I asked for that. And I think I got it's that. good. You can also focus on like I want to feel this way. You know, if you mm -hmm. focus on a feeling, you let go of outcomes or it's so true things surroundings. You know, I just yeah. want to feel this way. You know, and I think that's a good thing to. That's a big part of manifesting too. Yeah. Is like you, the the idea and then the emotion of how would I feel mm -hmm. if I had if I had that thing right now? Mm -hmm. Like that, the, you know, that's the electromagnetic field. Mm -hmm. Is the emotions I believe are the that's the the, the magnet mm -hmm. and the electricity is the thought. So the electromagnetic, you know, so mm -hmm. they, they, they work together and find each other and mm -hmm. vibrate in the universe, all that, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, I was gonna say, what's uh, what's what's something uh, uh, serious or silly, like something in your manifesting. Uh, chamber right now yeah. something so Ooh, what's in the chamber i like this like yeah this. That's, this is a good, this is good. yeah this is so in my chamber so uh, this is funny because i was actually last night i got really high like i got, I got stoned and i had this i had this concept of 
you know, we want we want to open like a healing center where you know, Alethea and Dana both do yeah. they both do energy work, they both do body work. Uh, I don't do body work. I'm more on the energy side. I want you to channel uh, guidance stuff like that. But we want to open a healing center. And last night it came to me that it's like this healing center should be the find yourself. Like we should figure out a way to be able to bring people in where you have like eight people to twelve people, and eight of them have like the the finances to be able to cover the other four like mm-hmm. you know you have like so four people get in that nece- couldn't necessarily afford it and you know eight people that pay for it and you know mm-hmm. however it works but it's just like it's a synergistic thing where you for x amount of days three days five days mm-hmm. seven days where it's all the everything's taken care of the meals are taken care of and it's the find yourself it's mm-hmm. to go clear the, the mm-hmm. bs out of the way mm-hmm. because you're your best self when you're when you've, you're eating clean your mind is clear. Mm-hmm. You don't have the day-to-day stuff. And it's like every time I've gone away for the weekend to do ayahuasca, it's like the way that I feel because I, I eat clean for usually uh, I try to eat clean for a month going into it, minimum two weeks of just really clean eating. And by the time you get down there and you get the medicine into you and the way that you start seeing the world and you're thinking so much clearly because the food that's been going in is much cleaner than the normal stuff that mm-hmm. I put in. Um, and I felt like if we had somewhere that we offered that ability where it was, it wasn't just three days I and mean, it was long enough where somebody could actually go find themselves without oh, all the noise of the outside train. world. That's what I've, that's, and it, that just came last night. Yeah. It's like that, I want to manifest that. I want yeah. that, I want something where people can, the people that can afford it, pay for it, and the people that can't still get it and everybody it just synergistically takes care of itself, mm-hmm. itself and it, on the back end of it, it has businesses where people, they have done healing and they find themselves and they've got all this newfound creativity and they want to go apply it to something like we have outlets where they can apply it to and there's people that can show them how to if you want to get into business for yourself and it's like it just in it those businesses get funded through the the thing that the, the center where they heal at and it starts to you know they, they produce money that comes back and feeds it so it's like everybody i had a, like a many mm-hmm. many years yeah. ago i was talking to my family maybe like seven years ago or something and i was like I want to come up with this. I want to have this website and I want to, I want it to be like dollar for a dream and everybody puts in a dollar and it goes to like certain dreams because it's the same, like in synergistic. And, and if you have, it was after I had that meditation with the vision that there was always enough in the world for everybody, you know, cause there is, and it, it, it's just interesting. It's along the same lines. Mm, yeah. I, think, I think because of that, that means that it's definitely an energy that we should definitely. That we share. I yeah, like yeah, that. And there's, you know, the more that I talk about this just in general, it's like there's other people that have the same stuff. They have. Mm-hmm. It's like there's a bunch of us that we just need to all it's pull together. It's like a together. collective consciousness thing. Yes, uh-huh. the collective consciousness. Mm-hmm. Like we just need to pull together and I think that we can make these things happen. Like Definitely. You know, the, we're, we don't always have the right resource, but we've all got resources. We all we've have got resources. different things that we bring mm-hmm. to the tables and that's like that's what – that's how mostly for the most part that's how this and is going to work as well and as it, it yeah and if we're not out here talking about it we wouldn't find it yeah we wouldn't find it so it's like there's other people that are that have the same ideas and want to be part of modalities and healing and stuff like that and you know reach out because we're we're going to st- we are starting something like it's happening we're yeah. in the works i'm already, so excited it's already started it's yeah started. yeah so what's in your chamber yeah what's <laughs> oh, I'm locked and loaded <laughs> you know like kind of a, like a similar thing i mean it kind of correlates with you know this this house that we're building um but, but like also like you know because once we build the house we're gonna live in it on the ranch for a while and like but we want to find we want to buy like a plot of land that we can like so like they like kind of like a place a place where i can like that kind of like with hopefully with that not at the expense of losing everyone around me but like <laughs> a very um, nice. a very a very a very like desolate quiet homestead um, where I also like tied in like with, um, with, uh, somewhere that I can just really create peacefully, um, uh, is a big one. Um, and just ha- more just like having that space. And I guess that could kind of be going in a few different directions, like having a very, um, easy outlet to record or like, you know, so like, you know, just find it because that, like I was saying earlier, that gets really expensive really fast and it, it and it's arduous when you're there. It's stressful, especially when you're on the clock. So having like having a really um, accessible, creative, and peaceful space is a big one for me. Um, more kind of like on the silly side, but not on the silly side. Um, I, I've been 
for quite a while I've been I've been manifesting a uh, a, a 1959 Gibson Les Paul <laughs> <laughs> or a 58. So, or 58 Flying V. When it's somewhere out there has... In those two years, those yeah, two models. Listen. Yeah, has... no. So, no, I mean, it's it's going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's just, you know, it's only like a half well, million dollar guitar. You it's... Know? But, but it's, and it, and it's, I know it's, like, for a lot of people, it's, like, really silly, but they, they're, they're, they're incredibly special. And they're, like, they call them the Stradivarius of the, of the electric guitar. They're, they're remarkable pieces of, of wood that you cannot get. What, were, tell us more about that. Like, I mean, it's they they were made in old growth forests that Gibson bought, and like the, you, you can they only made them for three years, and then so, like and then they went to a whole different process when they reissued them years so later. So there's not a lot of there's them. There's no no. I think there's only somewhere in the realm, give or take, of like two thousand of them. There, there, there's not a lot. Wow. And the and the flying V is even less. I think there's somewhere like fifty or something. At like, um, but I, and I've I've played real ones when I worked at Emerald City Guitars in Seattle, and we we got on all these amazing vintage instruments. And, so uh, did, they st and they still do this thing. They get them all the time. So check them out; they're awesome. Did, cool. What's the and did, you can tell the difference when you play them? Oh, incredible! Yeah, it's it's insane. You know, and I think most people probably. I mean, you have to be playing guitar for a while to really hone in on that kind of tone and like just like just vibrational response from those instruments. Um, and it's also how you play, like how you draw out the sound. Um, so I think for really serious players like it, like like myself, like I've dedicated my whole life to it pretty much since <laughs> you you sit and you compare and you play something a, a real deal instrument like that versus I mean they make very good convincing replicas of and there's all sorts of stuff that's modern that's incredible but there's something about those instruments that is just incredibly special and and it's there's just there you can't you can't recreate it you know you can have things that are equally cool and you know like sound amazing you know you can't but, recreate it but, but there's you... something about those and just the histi historical significance of 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 and the craftsmanship at the time the parts you know like there's just something really remarkable about the whole thing like you you, you feel it when you pick them up and you play them and I I got a couple old vintage instruments that I. That I've collected over the years. That, well, speaking of that are that are that have that same thing, but the 59, 58, 59 Les Paul is like that's what I'm going after. That's so, like the that's like you can't go, you can't you can't get any crazier than that. What's the coolest piece that you have right now? Uh probably the one I was playing um the last time I sat in with you guys when I had the guitar that uh, uh, early nineteen sixty five Fender Stratocaster. That's that's my baby. I got I got a couple other really cool ones too from the '60s, Gibson and Fender, but but that's the one that it, it just like it's 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 like 98% original. It's got it's got like a replaced tone, not or a replaced uh, pot in it or something, you know. So it's like it's like it's all it's like it's just and it's in fairly good condition, you know. It's just that original paint, you know. It's just like it's in really good condition. Yeah, it's just an it's just got a it's just got a magic to it. I mean, that was the same. That was the same guitar off the same assembly line, right on the same guitar that that uh, Hendrix used in his BBC debut, playing Hey Joe or you know some shit like that. And like, but you see it, it's like it's got the they only made the logo that way for like two years or less, I think it was like sixty four, sixty five, and you see this, it's just a piece of history, you know. Yeah, and there's cool. and there and there there's just something special about stuff from that time period, you know, like like post war. You know, like you know, and and, and, and like pre and post war uh, instruments. You know, like just when certain materials are were needed for the war. You know, they had to figure out other ways of making things. And so, like, not not necessarily. I wasn't really going on with Fender then, I, to my knowledge, maybe a little bit. But um, but on a lot of like acoustic instruments and stuff like that, it's just yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. Just the the whole, and it's it's one of those things that you can really go down the rabbit hole and. Well, I know that the electric guitar is like that's your that's your thing, and you're you're amazing at it. But the the sounds that an acoustic guitar makes are mm. some of my favorite. Oh yeah, I love I, so beautiful. I love I I learned uh, I started learning um, from a, a guy that was a bluegrass guy, and so like so I played a lot of acoustic guitar uh, at the beginning. And, so we're gonna and, and I still do I still play I write and play on acoustic guitar, but but with but the band didn't like turn it up to ten. That's like that's. Where I really am like in my happy, happy place. But I do love it. I do love acoustic <laughs> music, folk music, bluegrass. 
Yeah, no, it's you, you play you play it all. You play it all at a really high level too. So uh, you guys get a chance to see Ian in uh, Crawford and Cosmic Miles. Make sure you come out in Vegas. You still have your standing uh, Thursday night gig at the MGM Level Up. We do right now, yeah. Okay. And yeah. so, is there any other? You have any, anything, anything else where people can go find you, or where do they find your schedule? Uh, you can go to Ian Crawford Official. Um, They're going to be posting com. their schedule more. Yeah, we'll try to. <laughs> well, now that we're playing our original music, we're a little bit more about like, hey, we're on the here socials. On the we're not socials. just uh, not just um, you know. Ian covering Crawford, songs for the for the party goers down Ian on the street. Ian Crawford and Cosmic Miles on Instagram. Instagram yes, Facebook. Yeah. Facebook. Ian Crawford guitar on Instagram. And, you got a yeah. TikTok? Any of that stuff? You guys? Ah, uh, I team. do. I, Ian Miles Crawford. Is it, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Well, thanks for jumping in. Hey, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Time. Appreciate it. Anything else we want to bring up, Alethea? I think we're. I think this we've is a covered good a lot of ground. It's yeah, we manifest some cool shit. Yeah, yeah, and we got the Les Paul. Make sure you guys, if you if you got it. Hit up Ian, he's looking for one. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, I know it's not in my budget yet, but it will be. Soon enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah.